Hi, my name is Kelly Bravo and I'm with Art in Action. I'd like to thank uh, Education Closet and the Connectivity Conference team for allowing us to put this presentation together for you today. Art in Action is an online visual arts curriculum. We are a nonprofit. We cover K through 8. We provide a curriculum online. We provide teacher training and materials if you need them. We are in the process of developing new curriculum to address 21st century learning skills and we've also had some requests for some steamy uh, curriculum. So we heard about a project going on at Britton Acres Elementary School in San Carlos, California, a school that's near and dear to my heart, and we wanted in on it. So we got together with the Art in Action uh, group at Britton Acres and the gardening program, which is called Bugs, Better Understanding of Gardening Sciences, and we put together a lesson that we're going to share with you today. The reason this project came about in part was because um, both in our action they're enrichment programs. That gives us some flexibility um, to play with things and they're very popular programs. The children love it when it's Bugs Day and they love it when it's Art in Action Day. The idea came about of what if we could bridge some of this? What if these things weren't just like floating, but what if we tied them together and tied them to maybe what they're doing in the classroom? And could we find some projects that allowed us to go math, science, art? bring it all together. For a long time I've had a desire to create a lesson about the golden ratio, Fibonacci numbers, fractals and spirals in nature. It's a natural phenomenon which occurs everywhere and it has not been taught to children in school generally. We decided let's just create a brand new lesson. <laughs> and so then you, Kelly and Kate and myself and at Pete's Coffee and there we are. Never seen Romanesco broccoli before but gorgeous and the spirals and then the Fibonacci sequence and it just sort of evolved and I remember us having huge ideas and then trying to pull it in because we wanted to develop a curriculum for second grade. So, there were several reasons we did, we ended up doing it in second grade. We, we looked at the standards and we saw okay the standards in second grade are involving things like measurement, they're involving things like geometry. So we were kind of drawn to that grade level, although I, we, you know, we also looked at third, we also looked at fourth. We um, and so how do you pull this Fibonacci concept back, and then how do you, what do you do in the garden around the science element of it, and then how do you pull that into an art project? That definitely was a challenge as well, to present this mathematical thing down at a second grade level. Because of that, we had to break it down and scaffold that. Like, what do they have? What's their prior knowledge? How do we build that up to where we want it to be? So the project starts in about October. Well, that's when you plant broccoli in California. And then November and December, they tend their gardens and observe the broccoli as it's growing. So this is one of the second grade beds. And right now we're fighting the caterpillars off, but caterpillars and crickets and grasshoppers often um, attack the cool crops at this time of year, in October. Hopefully you don't have any critter problems like we did. We had deer that got into the garden and stripped the leaves of our uh, broccoli over the holiday breaks. It ate the leaves on the outside and the meristem is still there. So is this plant going to die or is it going to keep growing? It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep growing. That's right. And then when the broccoli is ready to harvest, uh, the classroom meets and they for their bugs lesson. So here's a question for you. How is a pineapple like a pine cone? Anyone see anything else that's kind of the same between this pine cone and this pineapple? It's like a pattern. What kind of pattern is that? What do you see? It's kind of spinning on the side. It's starting to spin around the side. It's spinning. Oh, that's what I and do you see how there's kind of spirals going this way? There's actually two sets yeah. of spirals. One's going this way and one's going that way. Do you see that on the pineapple too? And I count the spirals going in this way. It goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, right? If I go the other way, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why would a pine cone be thirteen and eight? Pine cone, pineapple be 13 and 8. That's what we're going to learn about today. Okay, here we go. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Interesting number. 1 minus 0. Watch what the next number is. Hmm? The next two are 8 and 13. 
that's interesting. Because what, what numbers did we have when we counted pineapples and oh, pine cones? Eight, eight and 13, right? I told you those numbers were going to be important. Does anybody see what the pattern is? Can anybody figure it out? One plus one is what? Two. Okay, and what is one plus two? Three. What's two plus three? Five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus five is 13. So what would the next number in this sequence be? Um, plus eight equals 21. Now this sequence keeps on going, and it's got a cool name. It's called Fibonacci. Oops, Fibo. One Fibonacci. and two C's. Fibonacci. Half of the students go up to the garden to make botanical garden drawings and observe the broccoli in nature and see how it's growing. So what we're going to do today is the art part of our work on broccoli romanesco. May I see the broccoli? All right, so who here, raise your hand if you've eaten broccoli. That doesn't eaten look all those like good broccoli. healthy veggies. Is that I know, it's all broccoli the romanesco, I love it. That's I've right. Eaten, now, I've eaten it zero times. Some of us know this as broccoli, but it has a scientific name. What was that Simon's scientific name? It's really close. Romanesco broccoli is what we call it. The scientific name is Brassica olaracea. And we use scientific names. Does anyone know why? Do you think that every language calls broccoli broccoli? No. So why might we have a name that all the scientists can use? Because everybody can use it. That's a great point. After the gardening lessons, the students head to the art classroom for their art lesson. This is where we're going to review what they learned in the garden and then move forward and learn about how those numbers, the Fibonacci numbers, relate to the golden ratio, which is a concept that's used in art and design for composition. Is there anybody here that doesn't know how to say Fibonacci? Fibonacci! Fibonacci! One plus one, two. One plus two, three. Two plus three, five. We find this pattern all over in nature, in our bodies, all over the world. And pretty soon we're going to learn about where we find it in art and in architecture, right? Yes, in the way our fingers grow. Yes. yes. The students are then shown images of how spirals are in nature on a macro and a micro level. We show them pictures of hurricanes and galaxies, and we let them draw the conclusions of how all these things are related. We also show them pictures of how the golden ratio is used in architecture and art. Getting all the way the bigger squares like that, all the way out. The students then transition to their desks where they're given a piece of graph paper where they're going to graph out the Fibonacci sequence and show how they visually how to make the golden mean. So they start off with one square on their paper. It goes one, one, and then they have to skip over two and up two to create the two. Then they go up, they count up three and over three to create the square of three and so on and so forth. The end result is a drawing of the golden ratio. And then the last thing the students do is draw arcs through it and create that spiral. The next step of this project is the final project. The students are given little squares all cut up already that are in the correct ratio for the Fibonacci numbers. The students are going to put them together kind of like a puzzle to create their golden ratio. The first thing the students need to do, which is a very important step, is to take each square and draw an arc on it. Okay, what I would like you guys to do, is this is kind of a tricky part, at least I thought it was tricky, on each one of these little squares, you're going to go from one corner to the other far corner, and you're going to draw an arc. Do you all know what an arc is? Yeah. No. No, yes, no. Okay, so I kind of like to hold my paper like a diamond. All right, and you're going to go from one end and you make a big rainbow. Let's call it a rainbow to the other end, okay? Once all the arcs are drawn, the students can visually see how they can start off with the largest square, which is an eight by eight square, and then move down through the five by five and the three by three, the two by two and the two one by ones to create the spiral. I don't get these all the time.
Again, it fell down, and then here's it. Other animals are using it when it's down, like snakes and rabbits. It's a boy that um that is growing up, and he and he built something. She was the only one that just took that whole spiral and made one thing out of it. And she said it could be a wave or it could be the wind. But I thought that was a good one too. I think this was very successful. I think this lesson for having piloted it twice now. Um, is absolutely the feedback from the teachers and the parent helpers um, and the students was really positive. One of our challenges was taking something that's kind of a complex idea, the whole idea of Fibonacci patterns and how they're growing and why they're in nature. This is something that even scientists don't have a really firm grip on why this is. We know that it has probably has something to do with the growth hormones and it definitely has the evolutionary advantage of better seeds and that sort of thing. But this is still an open question and we wanted the kids to wrestle with that question and wrestle with, oh, why is that? Why is that? That's so neat. And so when you can start with a question and then lead them to a path of discovery um, and have them at the end say, whoa, that actually makes sense that this is connected to this and this is connected to this. That's, that's what we wanted. Um, it's what happened and um, I'm thrilled. And you could hear the kids say, whoa, this is so neat. We started with pineapples and now we're doing spirals and that's like the shells and this is like this and this is like this. And it was all, all those connections came together in this lesson. And I think that was really amazing. It's just so rewarding to watch these kids have their aha moments to see the final product that they create. The chicken and the egg, right? Where you got an egg and then you got a chicken hatching out of the egg and, and it telling the story of the growth all the way full circle to another chicken laying another egg. <laughs> I mean, that's cute. What art does to a child, it's a completely different sort of hour out of their day than than the rest of the school day. And so the cool thing about working with second graders too is that they're young enough that when you can wow them with something like that, which is kind of like nature magic, you know, it's, the, it's, it's when science feels like magic, and they go, whoa, that's amazing, and it's beautiful, then all of a sudden, math and science are a thing of beauty, and they're a thing of wonder, and they're a thing of creativity. And isn't that amazing to be able to set that kind of attitude in a child so young? Like, math is cool and amazing and beautiful. That's a good world. I'd really like to thank Britton Acres Elementary School for allowing Art in Action to come in on their campus and try out this lesson in a couple classrooms. We really had a good time. The students enjoyed the project, the parent volunteers, and the teachers were both fascinated by this concept of Fibonacci numbers and spirals in nature. I'd also like to thank Connectivity Conference and the Education Closet for allowing us to present this to you today.